There was this sensation that came over me as I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 where I kind of realized how fortunate we are as a human species that the Earth turned out the way that it did. You know, that the, uh, you know, for our size as human beings, we can traverse mountains and we can run through caves and we can run through water and swim and, you know, the world is surmountable. The real world. And what's exemplified in this game is that natural world. It's almost like a natural world simulation, and it's absolutely staggeringly beautiful, but it does give you a sense of scale and perspective because, you know, you can certainly think of other planets in the universe where there would be big, huge ice chutes or just, you know, insurmountable objects in every direction that a, a, a living organism like ourselves just couldn't grapple with and deal with. But we've been fortunate. The world has kind of been shaped around us as we have been shaped in it. And it's weird thoughts like that that Red Dead Redemption 2 elicits from you as you're playing the game because it manifests a huge amount of time to ponder things. There is a methodical slower pace to this game as I've talked about in my previous uh, looks at the title. And I'm not fully at peace with how it manipulates that for me as a game player because it asks to take huge chunks of your life and your time in order to experience as much of it as you possibly can and I finished the, the campaign but I have you know no doubt dozens of hours of other content that I have not explored and not seen I have not been the world's best hunter in the game I have not done a lot of the card games or played dominoes I haven't done a whole bunch of bounties <laughs> I felt like the need for earning income really wasn't that relevant. I mean, I would go off and rob a stagecoach or rob a train, I would bring it back to my gang. I found the guns that I, I needed. I didn't go out and purchase them. There is a whole economy in there, and you can outfit your character in lots of cool, customizable clothing. You can style the, the hair any way that you want to. You can put pomade in it. And I did a little bit of that, but for the most part, I wanted to experience the campaign, which is, to my, you know, in my estimation, maybe around 60 hours or 70 hours. It's pretty damn impressive. Let me start by saying that. It's pretty damn impressive. There's a great story in there. You play as Arthur Morgan, who is our new protagonist. Even though you see John Marston and you see uh, other members of the gang and, and members of the cast that you see in the original Red Dead Redemption, you are in the boots of somebody that is not really mentioned in the original Red Dead Redemption. Even though you've left an impression on all of these characters, I didn't really understand Arthur Morgan at the beginning. I felt like he was too much of a blank slate, which I think is part of the design choice here. I think Rockstar really wanted you to experience the perspective of somebody new and almost looking in on the uh, on the foibles and on the on the complexities of the gang that's assembled for us across both of the Red Dead Redemption games. And that perspective takes a long time to kind of warm up to. And I talked about, you know, many, many hours of playing the game and I couldn't tell who was speaking to who because the camera was pulled back behind a bunch of cowboys racing in a direction. And I'm like, I don't know who this cast of characters is. But of course, over time, you do get to know uh, all of the different gang members in there and they each have their charms. Uncle's always pissed drunk and we've got... Uh, Micah, who's always an antagonistic, sort of poking in your face kind of attitude. Dutch is very charismatic as the leader, and you understand why. Sadie Adler actually stole my heart. I think she might be the strongest character in this game because she goes on this really tremendous arc throughout it, and you can feel her pain. And of course, John Marston appears and has lots of great stuff to do in this game as well. I enjoyed getting to know this cast of characters. I enjoyed the cut sequences, and I enjoyed many of the missions, but I felt like Rock Rockstar really did their part to kind of level up on the promise that Red Dead Redemption 1 proposed. Because when we played Red Dead Redemption 1, and I don't know if you're like me, but I played it and I was like gobsmacked at the magnificent beauty and the breadth of the game and how far I could travel within that world. It really just connected with me emotionally. I finished the game and didn't want to leave that world. It was just so beautiful and it kind of suggested that we've reached another level with telling stories through games and giving us an open world that was living and expansive. That was a bar that was set high and, and obviously Rockstar and its many teams around the world said okay we have to meet and exceed that and so they consequently doubled down on everything. There's like three of everything and they've talked about this ad nauseum about the scope and scale of the world of Red Dead Redemption 2 is it just dwarfs Red Dead Redemption 1. Red Dead 1 it just fits into a tiny little corner of this map, which is all wonderful, but there's a lot of padding. 
You know, I'm trying to skirt around the issue here, but the issue I have with Red Dead Redemption 2 is there is a lot of padding. There is a lot of repetition in the missions. They're interesting, they're cool, they're bad guys that you want to hunt down and kill, and there's lots of murder that you commit in this game, and there's little tangential missions and cool mechanics that are picked up in interesting ways that are sprinkled throughout. But for the most part, what you're doing in this game over and over again, and it wore on me, is you run into some kind of fort or town or camp or something and invariably all the shit hits the fan all the shit and then you got to fight everybody and then it's just blast your way and headshot your way out of every single situation over and over and over again and of course it scales up and you know you're shooting at army people you're shooting at you know cops you're shooting at uh, uh, Pinkertons you're shooting at you know other gang leaders and gang members and it's just two rinse and repeat and it started to get on my nerves couple that with the fact that it takes a long time just to get from one location to another and there were so many times in this game where you would get to a location, you'd complete it, you'd kill everybody, it's awesome, you did your stuff and then way over there on the other side of the map is the next thing that you got to do, the next little yellow spotlight comes up that you want to get to so you can progress the story. So you would trudge over there and it's beautiful, don't get me wrong. I love the scenery and the lighting and the mist and the fog and the storms and the rain and it's all so goddamn gorgeous. I, you're sitting there going, I cannot believe it. But you know, 60, 70 hours of that world there's a couple things that come to your head. I mean, I live in Vancouver. I live in one of the most beautific, gorgeous, uh, you know, natural splendor kind of environments in the world. And I can go outside and walk a couple blocks and I'm in the woods. And I'm very lucky and I'm very fortunate. And so I see this and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. But it kind of makes me feel bad that I'm not walking outside and enjoying this in real life, you know, like getting some fresh air. I think, and this is a big part of the message of the game, is the destructive force of man, the inability for us to get along and how much killing, I mean, that's reinforced through the story over and over. But the destructive force of man across nature, too, we see that with the city sections that pop up and all the black smoke that's belching into the air and you know the animals that we trample over as we're getting from location A to location B. There was a melancholy. I mean, there's this ever-creeping melancholy, partly associated with the narrative, but also with the rationalization that this is presenting an era where we really started to screw things up on this planet. Like, we really went from, you know, a natural world that we kind of could coexist in to machines and black smoke smoke everywhere and it just makes you kind of heart sick you know and that's kind of the way that I was feeling which is good because I think that's a powerful part of the narrative drive of this experience but yes I did start to get numb to it and I did start to feel like all of these ways that they were trying to wow me with the natural world were coming in and going out because I just I just wanted to get to the next mission you know and I don't quite know how Rockstar could have altered that but I do feel like overall the game could have benefited from some editing and I know that that's gonna fly in the face of a lot of people out there that think this is probably the best video game ever made and there's lots of reasons why you could suggest that but I feel like there is a lot of padding and there's a lot of repetition there were also a lot of control snafus and issues as I was playing this that drove me crazy right up until my final hours with the game where I was still struggling to aim properly or you know lean up against and, and get under cover properly I started to get angry at it and mostly because the game again suggests that we have reached another level like Rockstar always does with their titles we have reached another level in telling a story in an open world experience like this but I also think of all the hours that I spent with the game is almost like five seasons of a TV show that I love, like HBO's Deadwood. And I can say, you know, emphatically that I care more about the characters that I got to know in Deadwood than I do about the characters in Red Dead Redemption 2. And I feel that's the next plateau for Rockstar. It's not just to think about the game conceits and the construction and the uh, adrenaline and the tactile kind of feedback that the game is presenting to us, but also you're spending so much money on the storytelling, you gotta give us more folds and more flavors and more you know, unique ways in throughout all of this, because it's undermined if we're just going on repeat mission after repeat mission after repeat mission, and we frankly, we do. 
All that being said, this is definitely a move forward for our business. It came at great expense, probably in terms of people's uh, own commitments and their workloads and financial expense from Take-Two and Rockstar. And I think it's all up there on the screen. I also think that we could easily create more content around Red Dead Redemption 2, and I'm just stating those ideas in my head right now. I'm excited to see what the plans are for Red Dead Online. But I can say emphatically, unlike The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild last year, which I put more hours into, probably two, potentially three times as many hours into Zelda, I didn't want to leave Zelda. I had to force myself to put it down. With Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm like, I'm quite happy to put the controller down and walk away from this game. I'm still thinking about it. It's still beautiful. I don't think it's better than Zelda. I frankly don't think it's better than the first Red Dead, and I don't think it's better than Grand Theft Auto V. I think that it's a better looking game than all of those. I think it potentially could be the best looking video game I've ever played when you think of the totality of the experience. But yes, I think that there are a lot of frustrations that are hard to dismiss, and uh, because of that, I am giving Red Dead Redemption 2 a 9.5 out of 10.